two sides of a coin. Two times the trouble, here's your look at the new Mattel Batman Missions Two-Face. Two-Face sports a weapon with double the attack, it's double trouble for the Cape Crusader. You know, before we get this review underway, the thing we always do, we're going to figure out how tall the Two-Face figure stands. And to no surprise, well, I guess some surprise, surprise to you, the viewing audience, the figure stands six inches exactly in centimeters. Let me go ahead and do that right now for you. You're looking at a figure that's 15.4, 15.4 centimeters tall. And seeing that the mob loves size comparisons, I aim to please the mob. Here he is next to one of the Batmans, also from the Batman Missions line. While we're also at it, let's bring in some villains. There is the Joker, the short-haired Joker. Get this one to properly stand. There we go. How about for a bigger size comparison, we bring in the Bane. That was also from the Batman Missions line. Well, you get the idea. Here's Harley Quinn, also from, yes, the pre-mentioned same similar line. And last but certainly not least, here is the Riddler. You'll notice a whole ton of villains. Poor Batman is all on his lonesome. Uh, of course, when we do comparisons, I figured it would make more sense to compare the villains. Because I always feel like the hero line, whatever superhero line there is, always gets dictated. I think really defines the line by the number of villains that we get, not so much the number of heroes. As we have a look at Two-Face's accessory. Hold on, what? Yes? Why is, why is Riddler still there? We'll get into that in a second. The neat thing that comes included with Two-Face is a double attack weapon. He sort of has like a machine gun on the one end and a blade stabby stabby on the other. Uh, these are not detachable. You cannot remove them. They are molded from the same plastic. But I really like the fact that you have a double attack. He doesn't really necessarily have the proper means to do both. You can put the handle of the gun into his one hand, and then unfortunately, like the other hand on the other hand, doesn't really quite... I mean, you can kind of get your thumb around there, but it doesn't really look so much like he's going to be stabbing necessarily. But again, like this is sort of how you can get it in place. You can also, of course, rotate this around and it's a little harder because the gun now is just sticking in the way of everything. But you can also get the hand, so just kind of bend the hand here. Just get it around the handle section, there we go. And again, he's got, kind of got like a, you know, stabby stabby happening right there. I really don't know what you would do with the other hand of the gun, uh, the other hand, I guess you could put it on the barrel of the gun. But it just, it looks a little awkward, I have to admit. I like the idea. I don't feel like the execution, though, is all that successful. So it does come with that. I can put that to the side. Now, why, 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 yells the mob to this reviewer, why did you keep, why did you keep the Riddler in place? Well, the reason why I kept him here is that I wanted to show the two figures side by side. Despite for the fact that Riddler's got this really weird and still continue to be perplexed by the idea that he's got translucent green plastic everywhere, he is actually utilizing the exact same body. The exact same body as that of Two-Face. With one notable exception, an exception that again makes no sense to me. While the jackets, the vests, the sleeves, and even really to that extent, the gloves, even though this is just painted, this is just his regular human hand, everything about the two figures are identical to one another. Except for the fact that Two-Face, they decided for str some strange reason to give him a free-floating tie. A tie that just doesn't go anywhere. There's not enough clearance tucked to tuck in the tie, that's a lot of T's, into the supplied vest. You can kind of wedge it in there, but it doesn't really feel like it sits properly flat. This is the way that, by the way, the figure came out of packaging, was the tie just sticking out, just sort of blowing in the wind like leaves. The other thing, too, is the tie clearly just looks like it doesn't attach to anything. Riddler's, at the very, at the very least, you can see that it's tucked underneath a shirt collar. 
Here though, he's got just a regular, just a regular almost t-shirt, just with a higher collar on the top there. But his tie doesn't really attach to anything. I don't know why, if they've already made a mold like this. They simply just couldn't have recreated this for Two-Face. Instead, you've just got this, this awkward tie that just sticks out. Uh, I could live with the fact that it hangs out the way that it does, but the fact that you can see how it just wraps around his neck seems unfinished, seems sloppy. And that, my friends, answer to your question was the reason why I kept Riddler in the picture. As you can see, the backs are the same, the fronts, again, are the same, pockets, everything else identical to one another. Successful, despite some questionable decisions for translucent green plastic. Slight failure, unfortunately, when it comes to Two-Face. Now, this is his more updated look of Two-Face, a look I've never really been personally a fan of. Two-Face was always one of my favorite Batman rogues. Unfortunately, though, since the introduction of the Nolan style of Two-Face, where he has no visible hair, he's just basically scorched and bald on the one side, I just found that Two-Face lost a little bit of the appeal. Though it defies, I'm sure, real realistic logic, I've always liked Two-Face with the crazier hairstyle on the other. And unfortunately, with that gone, it sort of puts this guy in a rooted place of reality that I don't feel like I want to visit all that frequently. I like it at the very least that they've given him a grimaced teeth visible on the one side and the open eyeball. Some traits, at least of Two-Face, that have continued to carry over. The coloring is consistent with one another. He's got the cranberry in the side of the head. I actually did a multiverse review of this guy as well. Obviously not this figure, but the multiverse counterpart of this figure. And unfortunately, like that figure, he doesn't even have the split cut dividing uh, are almost conflicting sides to himself in his jacket. Instead, it's just all one cranberry. It's almost like the color of wine. Uh, the legs, of course, now get full black treatment. They're not, a, again, a half and half treatment that they've done normally in the past with two face figures. Can't help but also notice that the material that they use for the front of his jacket clearly is not the same coloring as his arms. The arms just been painted in this plastic. This is actually just an overlay of rubbery plastic over top of Two-Face's body. You can overlook that, and most of us really should overlook that because these are just like basic line of figures geared clearly towards kids. Should we, as collectors, probe this guy unnecessarily in the way that we have to nitpick all the little intricacies his arms don't match the torso. His tie hangs. Okay, we're going to run with the tie. The tie doesn't make any logical sense whatsoever. But, I mean, you have to kind of suspend some disbelief looking at a figure that's clearly geared towards kids. That's a basic line of figures. And, no, things like arms aren't going to, unfortunately, match to that of the torso. It's just, one, it's just the luck of the draw. For this guy's posability, let's go through the following. His head rotates all the way around. Kind of gives you a good idea right there of how the collar kind of comes together. Just don't know what they were thinking. Why you've got these vis... Okay, we're going to stop talking about it. Um, I do like the head sculpt for what it is for an updated look at Two-Face. It's not a bad-looking head sculpt. I just kind of miss the days. Stop living in the past, man. Miss the days of the hair. Uh, his arms rotate all the way around. Luckily, for the basic class of Batman vi mission vi figures, the arms, at the very least, can hinge outward, and you can rotate them all the way around. He's got a bend at the elbow, also rotates the forearm, and it rotates the hand. Uh, Mid-waist swivel. Uh, the legs only do this, only do this. They don't do this. They don't V-cut out. They only swivel back and forth. That's, unfortunately, where these figures get trimmed back. Uh, <clears throat> on the production costs of this. I'm getting all choked up for the fact that this figure is, uh, just is tie, bend at the knee, and unfortunately no swivel in the foot. So there is Two-Face, and uh, we'll just reach off camera once again, give him his, give him his, almost, it doesn't even seem like the gun belongs to him. It seems like it should be belonging to a larger figure because it's way too overscaled for him. Still, though, I like the ridiculous nature of having this giant blade on the handle portion of what is an already large machine gun. 
Could it be something that he could wield? Probably not. But I'm sure everybody, including Batman himself, will be so distracted with where his tie attaches to that they're probably going to overlook the fact that he's got this giant armory attached to the side of his hand. In final looks, members of the mob, I decided to give him an alternate look for how can, he can hold the firearm, sort of holding the handle in the opposite direction. He would be ultimately just shooting the sky, but it does give him the means to stabby stabby with the knife that's located on the back, the bottom of the machine gun, the rifle that he's holding currently. Not a bad looking Two-Face. Some awkward decisions played by Mattel. I don't really know why they decided once again to not attach the tie to anything when we've already been there. We've done that with Riddler. Riddler, other than his weird translucency, was a successful looking Riddler. I don't know why they just simply couldn't have done the exact same torso duplicate to carry over the exact same mold to Two-Face, obviously just giving him a different color. The head sculpt is passable. I have to get out of the old-fashioned way of thinking that this Two-Face should have had hair sticking out on the other side of his head, nor for the fact that the figure should have had the half and half running all the way down to his shoes that his suit should be split in half, one color being so drastically different from the other, but that's old man thinking. Two-Face isn't designed like that anymore, so I have to just accept the fact that Two-Face, this is the way he looks currently in the comics. That is until, once again, we reboot the entire universe and Two-Face looks different along with the other DC heroes and villains yet again. In the meantime, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, I actually found this one at Toys R Us. I found it along with the Nightwing. I guess that's part of the newest wave of Batman mission figures. I'm glad as well, by the way, FYI for your information. I'm also happy that Mattel is still making Batman Missions figures. They're sort of a fun pickup. They're not overly expensive, and from time to time, if you happen to be going through the toy shelves, it's kind of nice to see a new interpretation of a character such as Two-Face, one of my all-time favorite Batman rogues, a slightly different coat of paint, but still, I guess, recognizable enough as the Two-Faced killer, and uh, I guess mob boss, Two-Face. Uh, either way, again, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, you should be able to find it now in retail stores. Today, we were having a look with some reluctancy to the decisions that they made, but nonetheless, we're having a look at the new Batman Missions Two-Face. There you go. Bob's your uncle. If you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other Batman Missions reviews, there's a playlist called, yes, somebody yelled in the back of the audience, is it Batman Missions? <laughs> it was Batman Missions. With enthusiasm. Uh, the Batman Missions playlist is your best bet if you want to check out the other things that I've reviewed of the Batman Missions line. It's all there. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos will be coming your way. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.